magnificent musical Python players, this is Prof G, and in this video we are going to learn to play sounds, WAV files, or MP3s in Python on the Raspberry Pi using the Pi Game Library. And even though this isn't technically CircuitPython, I think this is one of the best ways to play sound files on the Raspberry Pi, since traditional CircuitPython audio libraries don't work well on the Pi, and everything that we learn will integrate with any other CircuitPython code that we write. Let's start the music! Now the reason I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3A Plus is because it has an audio jack built in. So do most of the other Raspberry Pi boards, but not the Pi Zero series of boards. Now you can add audio to the Pi Zero boards, but you've got to add extra parts and do some extra configuration. So for the extra $10, if you want to play audio, I think it makes sense to go for at least the Pi 3A Plus. That's the board that we use in my physical computing course. Now if you do have a Pi Zero, you can add audio in a few ways. You can add a bonnet or an add-on board that adds audio output features. Just make sure that it either comes with matching speakers or that it has a speaker jack that matches your speakers. You can also buy an inexpensive USB audio card, but most of these are standard USB, so you'll also need a USB to micro USB adapter to plug that into the Pi Zero. Now the Pi Zero also has a micro HDMI output, so you can get a micro HDMI to VGA output, but make sure that that also has an audio jack. Most of them do, because that's the jack that you need to use to plug into your speaker. Or if you're very ambitious, you can also wire up an audio jack using your Pi Zero's pins. Now you can search online for tutorials and advice on all of these methods. Pi Zero folks, when you're set up, come on back. Everyone else, let's hook up our speaker. So with your Pi powered down, plug your speaker into the audio jack of your Pi, then make sure that your speaker is powered on. If you have a battery powered speaker and you're not plugged into power, make sure that it's charged. Plenty of times I'd wondered why my audio wasn't working and it was because my speaker wasn't turned on. And then you can plug in your Pi and power it up. Now I'm connecting to my Pi over Wi-Fi, so I'm gonna use the terminal to log in. On the Mac, I'm gonna press command space, bring up spotlight, type in terminal and press return. Windows users, you likely wanna get into putty and then I'm going to increase the font by typing command plus a few times and I'm going to log in using ssh and space pi at my host name dot local if you're one of my students working on the campus wi-fi network you want to leave dot local off then enter your password and before we begin why don't we make sure that our speaker is working that's always a good thing to do because if we run into any problems we want to make sure the problem is in the program that we wrote and not in the hardware configuration so here's a terminal command we can use to play audio through our speakers it's speaker dash test space dash c2 space dash twav space dash lowercase l7 just like this so this is all lowercase now when i press return output is going to continue so when you've heard enough you can just press Control c front left front right front left front right so that's working great and one of the things you can do if you were running into some problems is you could run sudo raspy dash config then right in systems options if you press return you have audio the second item down now I'm only using the audio jack that's built into the Pi, so I have no other settings here. It calls that headphones, but that's the audio jack. If you had another way to play audio, like a USB sound card, you'd probably see that here. I don't need this, so I'm just going to right arrow over and cancel, press return, right arrow over and finish, press return, because everything's working great for me. Now even though we're in CircuitPython school, we're actually not going to use CircuitPython to play audio. The CircuitPython libraries for analog audio out aren't supported on the Raspberry Pi, but there's a really great library recommended by Adafruit called Pi Game. It's for developing games on the Pi, but since most games play sound and music, it's got some easy to use audio libraries that play WAV and MP3 files, and we can use Pi Game directly in our CircuitPython code. So we're gonna use Pi Game too, but to use it, we need to install the Pi Game library, which will extend the Python programming language with all of that Pi game goodness. And here's how we do that. At the prompt, we enter sudo sudo space apt dash get space install space python3 dash pi game. That's P Y G A M E. Press return. This installation is a quick one, and we're good to go. By the way, every now and then you'll see me type in clear and press return. That just clears the terminal screen. Now, just so that I have some files to work with, I'm going to download some from our CircuitPython School Google Drive. So you can find that on the web at bit.ly slash circuitpython school files, all lowercase. I'm just going to right click on this folder that says 12 drum sounds. We use that in one of our Arduino videos when we did a drum machine with capacitive touch. Just right click, select a download. I'm going to download mine to the desktop. If your browser doesn't ask you, it's probably downloading this to your downloads folder. 
And if you look inside here, you'll see 12 WAV files that play short audio clips, their drum sounds, record scratches, things like that. Now, if you don't have your Pi set up to be accessed from the Max Finder, you can see the earlier tutorial in our Raspberry Pi playlist. If you're a Windows user, you can use a tool like WinSCP. A lot of folks download that from Ninite. There are a bunch of great tutorials online that you can reference if you need that. But I've got my Pi set up with Netatalk, which is what we learned in the previous video. And it looked like my Pi was connected, but it went away. But no fear, I can just open the Finder's Go menu, select Connect to Server. The command I need is already in there from my last session. It's AFP colon slash slash the host name of my Pi. This is built with Prop G dot local. You should use your Pi's host name, of course. And for my students using the campus network, you probably want to remove dot local from the end, then click Connect. And I'm in. And a window opens with the Pi's home directory. That's the default directory on the Raspberry Pi, and that's what I want. That's where I want to drag my 12 drum sounds folder. So I'm going to go back to the desktop on my Mac. I'm going to drag over the 12 drum sounds folder to my Pi's home volume. The files copy over, and now I've got that folder and all of its contents on my Pi. In fact, if I go back to the terminal, I can type the ls command to get a listing of the files and folders at this level of my Pi. That's the base level, or the Pi's home folder. And I can see in here that I've got a folder named 12 drum sounds. And if I want to check things, I can also look in the terminal, change directories, and take a look inside of the 12 drum sounds folder. So if I'm in the terminal and I type cd space, that's the change directory command, and I can start to type the name of the directory, so 12, and I can press tab because there's nothing else in this volume that's named starting with 12. The name of the folder is filled in automatically for me. Then I can press return. I've changed directories, which is also shown by the change to the left of the prompt. And if I use the ls command again to list the directory, I see all 12 WAV files looking good. Now, if you wanted to play any of the files to test them out, it would play them through the Pi if we typed A, play, space, and the full name of any file that you wanted to play. And it could be a WAV file or an MP3. I'm going to play the tap, tap, slap file. So I'll start to type in tap, and I'll press tab. Tap, tap, slap, dot, wave is filled in for me automatically. I'll press return. Nice. Let's try that again. Up arrow, press return. And that sounds good. Then I'll change directory to get back to my main Pi directory, cd space dot dot, press return, ls, just to make sure I'm in the right place. These files show that I'm exactly where I want to be. And now we're ready to code some things up in Python. So I'll tidy things up, launch Moo. Now Moo doesn't work directly with the Raspberry Pi like it does with microcontrollers. So you'll see this message that says, could not find an attached circuit Python device. Now expect that when working with a Raspberry Pi. We're just gonna be using Moo as an editor to type in our programs. We don't have any access to the serial console or plotter in Moo when we use the Raspberry Pi. Now we can save to our Raspberry Pi from within Moo, but the code won't execute automatically when saved like it does when we use a microcontroller. So instead what we're gonna to need to do is go back into the terminal, run the Python program from the prompt and look in the terminal for any output or to see if we have any errors. So, okay, we'll see how that works in a bit, but let's type in our code. I'll put in a comment that says play sounds with Pi game. And the only thing I need to import here is Pi game. And just like when we played sound using CircuitPython on our microcontrollers, I'm gonna create a variable called path, and I'm gonna set that equal to the location of the folder that holds my sound files. So for me, in double quotes, the string's gonna be slash home slash pi slash 12 underscore drum underscore sounds slash close double quotes. And as long as you put your sounds file in your root directory like I did, the only thing that would change in here would be the name of the directory if, if your directory's name was different than 12 drum sounds. Next, I'm gonna create a variable named sound underscore files. And I'm gonna set this equal to a list. So equals an open square bracket. And then in this list, I'm gonna put 12 strings one for each full name of the sound file, including the dot wave extensions that I want to access. And then later in the code, I'm going to iterate through this list and I'm going to play each of the sounds one at a time. Now I could type in all of the file names, but to avoid typos, here's a trick that works at least on the Mac. I can't say for sure on Windows, but I'm gonna to go to the Mac Finder. I'm gonna go into my 12 drum sounds folder. I'm gonna highlight all of the files. Then with a command C, that's the shortcut to copy. Then I'm gonna to return to Moo, and I'm gonna command V to paste those names in and just the names show up. Normally this would paste in the files themselves, but for Moo, it just pastes in the name of the files, which is great. Now all I need to do is surround each of these file names in double quotes, put a comma in between each string, and also make sure that I've got a closing bracket at the end of all of the file names in my list. And this looks right, so my sound underscore variable now has all of my file names. Excellent!
So I'll put a comment up here that says file setup and a comment down here that says pi game setup. And to set up pi game, I'm going to say pi game dot mixer dot init and open and close parens. Then I'll create a speaker volume variable speaker underscore volume and I'll set that equal to 0 0.5 and then I'll set pi game dot mixer dot music dot set underscore volume and in parentheses pass in speaker underscore volume. Now 0.5 is 50% volume. And then what I'm going to do is just iterate through all of the elements in our sound files list. So I'll say for sound underscore file in sound underscore files colon. Remember, that's going to go through each of the strings that are in the sounds underscore files list one at a time. And then I'll say pi game dot mixer dot music dot load passing in path plus sound underscore file. So that'll load the individual file that I'm at when I'm iterating through the list. Then I'll say pi game dot mixer dot music dot play open and close parens and then while pi game dot mixer dot music dot get underscore busy open and close parens equals equals true with a capital T colon and then the next line continue. That's just going to make sure that I don't play the files one on top of another, but that I wait for a file to play before I move on to play the next one. Then I'll save this to my Raspberry Pi, so I'm just going to double click on the Untitled tab here, click on the hostname of my Pi in the Mac Finder. I'm going to make sure that I save this in my Pi's home directory, that's really the Pi directory. And I'm going to name this sound underscore demo, then press save. Now let's go back into our terminal, and if I type in ls, we can see that we have a sound underscore demo dot pi file in here, so we saved it correctly to this directory on our pi. And now let's run this. And the way that we do that is we type in python space, and I'll type sound underscore press tab demo dot pi is added automatically for me. And when I press return, this will run automatically. Let's see what happens. And nice, we heard all 12 of those sounds play one at a time. Now, if we had any problems, we'd see the same sorts of error reporting with the error type and line number that we saw in the serial console in Moo when we got errors. And just like in Moo, our code would stop running. We just see these errors print to the terminal. So now let's up arrow and listen to the sounds a couple more times. And you sound magnificent. You might want to save a backup copy of this to the CircuitPython School folder on your computer to keep a copy of this for reference. Nicely done. In the next video, we're going to learn to play sounds from a button press. Let me know if you like this video. And rock on, you funky coder.